was the primary joy for White Rock Lake are fishing and boating. The silt that tumbles down the creek from the heavy urbanization to the north constantly threatens both. There are three active sailing clubs on White Rock Lake, and on weekends especially, they are a joyous sight. The water is gently cut with their prows as they race. The entire neighborhood, for any who can see the lake, is enhanced with the grace and color of the sails. But the boat population is beginning to fail. Sailors are moving to nearby lakes. White Rock is still getting shallower and shallower, and the possible sailing area is shrinking. This concerns the fish as well, though not quite as keenly. But again, it comes down to area. More and more water is choked with dirt and trash. The silk problem is primarily an engineering one, but the lake's ecology must be a concern. Will an ecological expert be asked for his help in the Forest and Cotton Report? The city did not request it. The major above-water threat is traffic. Lowell Cook, the Park Department Superintendent of Lakes, says so many people drive in the park on weekends that he is surprised there aren't more accidents in spite of the safety precautions that are taken. Lawther Drive circles the entire lake. Scheduled for study is a possible second drive. It would parallel Lawther and be separated from it by a green area. Each drive would be one way. This is a solution to accommodate automobiles. It must be studied, but must it be done? Is not an alternative to ban automobiles altogether in the park, or in parts of it, as Yosemite and some of the larger western parks have had to do. The other threat to the lake comes from traffic that has nothing to do with the park. The Texas Tech report anticipated the crossing of Mockingbird Lane, then considered as imperative. One current possibility, which the Forest and Cotton Report may bring to light, is the extension of Lake Highlands Drive out across Dixon Branch to connect with Lakeland on the other shore, and so relieve the arterial flow on Garland and Butner Boulevard. Everybody expected the silt to eat up White Rock, but not many of us expected it to be destroyed by car. That is a distinct possibility. Sometime our city must put a value on its assets, both natural and creative. George Kessler did it in 1910, and some others, fortunately some of them in the park department itself, have tried to hold to these values, but it is increasingly difficult and increasingly important. Hopefully the Forest and Cotton Report will call for such standards. If it does not, it will at least reveal what is really important and to whom.